Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Lo and I'm one of the ONG consultants in Sunway Specialist Centre, Dalansara. Today, what we're going to talk about is the vaccination against cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is cancer of the cervix or what we call the neck of the uterus, the entrance to the uterus. So this is actually the second most common cancer in Malaysia. Okay. And this is found in women between the ages of 15 to 44. Every day, five new cases of cervical cancer are diagnosed and two women lose the fight against the disease. Unfortunately, the symptoms to this disease are often just a bit of irregular bleeding, sometimes bleeding in between your periods, and these symptoms are often ignored. So by the time patients come to us, it's normally quite late. While this disease is very common amongst patients between the age of 40 to 64, all ages are at risk once they're sexually active. We do know now that about 90% of all cervical cancers are caused by the human papilloma virus, also known as HPV. So this is actually one of the viruses that's around. HPV can be passed from person to person um, and can be transferred via sexual intercourse. Anybody can be infected with HPV and won't know it because there are no symptoms at all. You don't get a discharge, you don't get any pain. And this uh, means that when you have sex, then you can transfer the virus from one person to another. Unfortunately, no treatment for HPV infections. But majority of the time, your body actually clears the infection off by itself within two years. Unfortunately, in some cases, the body is not, may not be as effective in clearing all the virus or the virus might come back. And then in that case, it can actually cause precancerous changes in the cervix. And this, if left untreated, can lead to cancer. HPV is very common, okay, so we don't know who has it and who hasn't got it. But we do know about 80% of men and women out there are actually inve infected with the HPV virus. This infection can actually happen at some point in their lives. This virus can also cause complications in both men and women. It can cause genital warts, can cause cervical cancer in women, and it can also cause penile cancers in men if left untreated. Well, the first thing is, obviously, we should be up to date with our cervical smears. Okay, cervical smears should be done every year. And to make them more effective, it's actually recommended that you do cervical smears with HPV DNA to make sure that we can detect any abnormalities. The reason why we do smears is because we want to look for precancerous cells in the cervix. We now have a vaccination available that can prevent HPV infection and eliminate the risk of this cervical cancer. So this vaccine is known as Gardasil 9 and is available in SSCD. Studies have shown that this vaccination will reduce all HPV-related cancers by about 90% and actually the benefits are that this vaccine actually lasts very long and it lasts more than 10 years. Now you know that cervical HPV can cause uh, changes in your cervix, but these changes do not necessarily become cancer. Like I said, your body is very good at normalizing. So your body is very good at trying to get rid of the virus. Your body is also very good at, at trying to convert these abnormal cells back to normal cells. So the large proportion of these, these changes will actually go revert back to normal. However, in some cases, these cells do not revert back to normal and they may actually change into cancerous cells. So which is why we actually recommend that you keep up to date with your, your pap smears and we also recommend that you um, get the HPV vaccine. Cervical cancer is a very slow growing cancer. So what we have to realize is that these precancerous cells will take a long time, maybe years before they develop into cancers. The fact that you've got HPV detected with your smear, it just means that you have been exposed to the virus. Regular smears will actually detect these precancerous cells and then they can be treated before they progress to a cancer. This vaccine is actually recommended for all patients between the age of 9 until the age of 45. This includes girls and boys. So vaccines actually protect your children before they're exposed to a disease. So we preferably we want to give it to the children before they're sexually active. This is why we actually recommend that the HPV vaccine is given earlier rather than later. This is actually safe in children and if you give it between the ages of 9 to 14, you only need two doses of the vaccination. If you have this vaccination from the age of 15 and above, then you will require three doses. 
People who have never had sex before are advised to have the vaccination regardless of their age. So even if you're above the age of 45, it's are advised to still have the vaccine. Even if you have been exposed to HPV previously, the vaccination will still have some benefit in reducing the cervical cancer as well. What we recommend is that if you are giving the vaccination between age 9 to 14, these two doses will be given within 6 months. If you are 15 years and above, then you need 3 doses and these 3 doses will also be given within 6 months. It is advisable to complete all these doses to ensure that you are fully protected. Yes, the vaccine is very effective. It's about 90% effective at preventing cervical cancers. But there is still a 10% risk that you, you may still develop cervical cancer. Because of this, we do recommend that you do need to keep up to date with your cervical smears. And we recommend that you actually combine your cervical smears with HPV DNA to make the cervical screening more accurate. Well, I hope that these have answered your questions. So if you need more information, kindly come and find us uh, for a chat at SSCD. And the vaccine is available here at SSCD as well. Thank you.